Hello everybody, welcome to the Legal Solicitors. Thank you so much. I saw you guys love the last video on why your application may be refused because of any criminal offense. The first video was on custodial sentence and you seem to love that video. Thank you so much. Um, keep coming back. We are able to assist you in immigration, housing, employment, and family matters. Before I go further today, I must clarify here that I said I mentioned expensive. I didn't quite explain that what I meant is how expensive home office fees can be. Of course, there are legal fees to be paid at the legals. We are able to assess your financial circumstances and able to agree a payment plan with you. So please contact us and we should be able to assess and see how we can assist you. We are so able to offer free 50 minute consultations. In that time, we'll be able to look at it and may be able to ask you further questions, send us more information and then we take it from there. So yes, we are very flexible. In terms of the home office fee, the reason why I mentioned that is that once your application has been considered and either refused, well, we hope, the, the aim of this video is to minimize the chances of your application being refused. Hopefully, it should not be the case, but if it is the case, then the fee you have paid to home office for the application is non-refundable. That is what I was referring to when I said it's expensive. In country applications, it would run you over 3,000 pounds or close to that for a single application, dependent on the type of applications you're making. Any 10-year rule, five-year applications, spouse who renewer, those are, they are very expensive. And the same, fee, the same fee you paid, your dependent will pay. Unless the only ground that you may get your fees back if the home office return your application on the ground that is invalid, then on those circumstances, you may be able to request for your fees back. That is, if you do not want to correct the error and then send it, either send the application back or maybe send a French application, if that's not what you want to do, then you can request for your fee subject of course to home office taking their administration fee or administrative fee i think that's what it is um which is why i thought i should mention that they may say on the application online it's pretty easy you can apply on you by yourself you do not need listen if you do not meet the requirement of the type of application you are applying it will, it will be most likely refused. You then end up losing your fees if you then have to go through the appeal process. That is an additional cost for you. So it is very vital that you speak to a lawyer to assess your case, whether you meet the requirement for the type of application you are submitting before you make such application. Hence, I mentioned that. So back to today's video. I will reiterate, I am focusing on application made after 1st of December 2020. The rules on criminality, on the reasons why your application may be refused on those grants. I, I discussed the mandatory grant, not may. There are grants. It, it says the Home Office published guidance it must be refused. And I mentioned that just to recap, 12 month sentence. And you've done application, uh, you're a persistent offender, you've committed serious offense like sexual, violent crime, um, or other one I, I, think, I think I wanted to mention here, drug related offenses, those are very serious, they, they are considered uh, serious um, offenses. And then your application must be refused. That is the language of the Home Office when they are giving them the guidance. I thought I should clarify that. One more point I wish to bring here is, I mentioned in the previous video, this is part two of that video, dealing on not custodial sentence, is you must disclose any criminal offense. 
the phrase in the application form is bad character. So that means whether be it in the UK or outside the UK, it must be disclosed. It does not matter how long ago it, it is the offense occurred or you finish serving whatever sentence. It could be even the medieval times. Well, I'm, being, I'm exaggerating there to drive home my point. The reason why it is vital that you disclose your criminal offense. Now, today's video is non-custodial sentence. They are not, they are discretionary. Home office will consider that as to whether to grant you leave to remain or to enter the UK. Remember that your V, even if you are, you arrive at the airport, your visa can be cancelled. Likewise, those in the UK here and it comes to their attention. Yeah, one other thing I want to mention, something very, very peculiar happened just two days ago. Was, I think it was on a Thursday. Um, I got a call that somebody's been detained almost 24 hours at Heathrow Airport. The reason why I'm mentioning that most people do not know their right. And of course, you just arrived in a new country. You don't know what are your rights are. If you are detained, home office have a whole range of powers to detain you, to cancel your visa. But if you find yourself in any of these circumstances, you can ask the immigration officers at that airport, you need to call your lawyer. You are entitled to speak to your lawyer. So please ask them that because that's what exactly ha happened. Once they contacted me, which was the following day, I then tell them, can you tell this person to tell the home office, the officer who is detaining that person at the Heathrow Airport, that they need to speak to their lawyer and that, that give the details of their lawyer, ask the home office to send every information why that person is being detained. I don't know what happened after that. I think it was within 30 minutes that person was released. Because we know there's a lot of things now that are quite, I don't know what I want to say, is political or not. What I must bring to your attention is that any care visa or student visa is being microscopically, <laughs> home office are considering it under microscope. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, that word. They scrutinize it enormously to find any reason not to al allow you entry. So please, I think you're better advised to be prepared in case you could find yourself in that position. Now, back to today's video. Non-custodial sentence, I would mention those, the list of what is considered non-custodial sentence that may have adverse effect, that may affect your application, that may mean that your home, of home office may refuse your application. These are under discretionary grant, except their persistence. And what I mean by persistent, if you've committed the same offense within, the, within six months or within three months, repeatedly committed, you've gotten caution, driving offense, fines, then yeah, it will be taken into consideration. Remember that, um, what I must mention here, the same thing also applies to if you're if you're applying to naturalize as British, it is not a right, it's discretionary. It doesn't mean that your application will be refused. You will simply have adverse effect on that and how they consider your application. A lot of reasons. Have you been, do you have lived before to remain here? How long have you remained here? How long ago was this um caution not consider a sentence so i will go through the list and i will be reading from my notes so that i am sure that i've given you the accurate information i think i will put this under the description section as well so that you're able to refer to it so this one is i'll just run through them absolute unconditional discharge fines fixed penalty notice notices penalty notices Sorry, penalty charge notices, penalty notices for disorder, cautions, warnings, and reprimands, community resolutions, community sentences, detention and training orders, confiscation and forfeiture orders, civil orders. 
disqualification from driving, I know you're surprised. It's there. Again, I said to you earlier, is bad character they are looking at. And antisocial behavior orders, civil injunction or criminal behavior orders. That last one, the acronym here in the UK is ASBO. So if you hear that, we, we, we're referring to antisocial behavior order. If you end up with that, it's not really a criminal offense at the first instant. If you breach it, it becomes a criminal offense. If you then, if you've received any of those, like three or four in the last six months or three months, you then it become a persistent, you are a persistent offender. It will affect your application, the outcome. I must also add here, um, hospital orders. And that one is, if you are being sentenced on the grounds of insanity, you may not have been sent to jail. You are now be detained at his majesty pleasure in some hospital, it is still a criminal offense. If a, a criminal custodial sentence, even if it's less than 12 months, it is a criminal custodial sentence. All this will be considered. I hope I've given you much information on what is non-custodial sentence and the reason why they must be disclosed. Please, I do not know, we will not be able to know the facts of your case. You cannot rely solely on this because each case, each cases are quite different. The facts are different. Until we assess your case, then we are able to advise you on what are the likely outcome, how the effect is going to have in any application you're making, even if you're applying from outside the UK. Again, please, you must disclose any cause, any criminal conviction. Let it be donkey years ago. Let it be happen. It does not matter how long ago. You don't want to face the prospect of them saying you were not truthful. You've obtained your visa by deception simply because you did not disclose a fact, a material fact, because these are considered material facts that may have resulted in the decision maker making a different decision. I hope I've given much information today. I will stop here. I think the next video will be application made prior to 1st December 2020. Thank you for watching and we are most grateful. Leave contact us and leave messages. We are here to help you. Bye-bye.